This show will concentrate on one of the greatest institutions in the world, the black woman. In order to get the real feelings and perspective of our sister, we went to her. A group was brought together with as many differences as likenesses, but held together by the common thread of the black experience. Another institution was added, Sister Lena Horn, who can from first experience speak about survival if you are born a woman and black in this society. Our woman has borne us, nurtured us, and saved our race, and in the process, she often got the worst of it. As a unique institution, the black woman remains. I believe the role of a black woman is to work for a just society, in the kind of a society in which children can grow up without fear, in which they can hope. Don't you think so? Really, you know, to boil it all down, a uh, black woman is mother of civilization. That adds it up. <laughs> she is. She's um, actually the mother of, you know. That's it. She's the mother of the earth. She brings, she bears forth the fruit to fertilize the soil. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> we that's have, it. Just, I agree. I think that's, we have overlooked the fact that black women uh, have for been for the white nation, we have uh, we have sucked. They have sucked us dry. That we have nursed the children. We have fed them. We have done everything. Uh, put all our energies, all our work into working for the white family. And now it's time for us to take all our strength, all the strength that Monahan says we have. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be the strongest women. Anyway, it's time for us to take all our strength, all our milk, all of that, and put it into working for the black nation. I'd like to touch on something here. I'm glad you brought this up. And I don't know what reaction this is going to get because a lot of people jump at me when I say it. But um, unfortunately, all people in this country, black people and white people, are subjugated to the same system of media, are subjugated to the same systems of communication, are subjugated to the same conditioning. And that's something we definitely have to reckon with if we're going to ever get through any of this stuff. Moynihan, that's sort of the name, uh, that's associated with that word matriarchy, definitely has to be dealt with. Um, I'd like to deal with him right. face to face. Right, right. I think that, that unfortunately, a lot of us, black men and black women, believe in the myth of that matriarchy. And I think mm -hmm. that, that, that that belief engenders a lot of negative things. Number one, it, it says that matriarchy is inferior to patriarchy which is a whole thing right there. You see that patriarchy is a sort of natural or divine order of things, which is not so. Two, that black men have believed and internalized the myth of white womanhood in this country and Anglo-Saxon impositions so that they place us in relation to where white women are. Um, it's two things a woman I believe being a black woman and a very proud black woman can do for a man, make him or break him. And then you take into consideration how the black man has been berated by the white man. His woman, you know, adequately couldn't have the luxuries of another woman born the same just like her. This man has to, you know, black men have stood by for a very, very long time and been humiliated by the, you know, the system. He can't get the job that this fellow can get. And you must understand that his wife might have to go on welfare. He has to stay in the humility of that. He has to watch the plumber duck if the welfare worker come in there. Mm -hmm. You understand me? He has always been, like, made to feel he's below the next man. So you must, all this you must come, you know, take into consideration. You know, now black men are learning, you know, that they're part. They're beginning to feel like a man. They're getting their dignity and their pride back. So he needs a woman to keep on pushing it. Vice versa, you know. And when you say about, you know, in the system, this system has destroyed, actually, the black man. You know, because uh, everything that we've ever done, there's no part of this country that you can say, if you touch that, that a black man didn't bring it in here. You know, everything that they built, they've never been able to share with it. I don't even want to hear that, you know, what society have done, 
just took our black men and destroyed their manhood. That's what they've done. They ain't abetted. Mm -hmm. I, I, please, I'm, I'm yeah. certainly not in disagreement. I'm in 200% agreement with everything you said. I think we all are. But might not, excuse me, might not be, you know, like, we understand that, that uh, um, what the brothers are going through now, as you say, the cultural national, but might not it all be very revolutionary, and you might be the better woman for understanding that they, right. at this point, they need you to walk a few feet behind and get their manhood together. Uh, so if it takes that, then I'm going to do whatever the brothers need now. I mean, I've been doing a lot of research on slavery and talk about wiping out and ripping off of people. They did it to the black man. They did it. And if it takes, at, you know, at this point, it, you know, a cultural nationalist say, you got to walk four paces <coughs> behind me, baby, slow. If that, that might be revolutionary, I'm, I'll do that. I mean, I'm going to do anything at this point that's Bertame, needed. is that revolutionary? How revolutionary is it if one half of us is in condescension and a kind of almost fear saying, 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 walking 10 paces behind you, I'm saying that in order for me to, quote, regain my manhood, Maybe that's I have to deny you your right peoplehood. No. Uh, is that revolutionary? I think we I'm really have to explore that. If somebody that. really needs that, you know, I, I don't, what, what we, just, we just have to do whatever we need to do to See, help that these black See, that says to me that you really together. believe that there has been this thing called a matriarchy that, as Moynihan I believe it. we've been ripped off as a people. Black people <laughs> have been ripped off. No, we <laughs> haven't been yes, ripped yes, off. But you're not dealing no. oh. with the internal thing <laughs> that, no. that really... I'll take that back. Uh, black people hasn't been ripped. Black people have been ripped of every, every <laughs> ounce of hum, hum, yes. human things that's entitled and do another human being. Right. Do you know you how know, we really can't is. get this together? Yeah. And, and really, <laughs> because to me, this is very alien, and we shouldn't be sitting here talking about uh, defining something which has been defined for us. We should be about redefinition. Mm -hmm. And I don't particularly care whether I walk alongside, in back of, or in front of. That is going to have to be defined for me by my man. Uh, we know too well what our, what, what our being is all about mm -hmm. in the United States of Europe. Uh, we, we have to deal with that. That's why I started out by saying, are we talking about changes within existing systems? Because that's all we're talking about. We're talking about a black nation within, within a European nation. And if we have to deal with that, then let's, let's redefine our own culture and stop being a subculture. Stop worrying about the man. That's right. deifying him. Who is the man? You know, I, I agree with you. Except, sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to... Um, mention in terms of, of cultural nationalism and what, you know, brothers feel. Um, I don't know, you know, if it's all true that brothers would like you to walk 10 paces in back of them. But I do know that um, we do have a definite role. And until we play our definite role, they cannot play their definite role. Mm -hmm. And our yes, roles sir. are complementary, complete and make perfect that which is imperfect. And that uh, if we go about being the inspiration of the nation, and again, educating the children of the nation and participating in the social development of the nation, mm -hmm. that it would be no problem. And when we say we should not discuss things, we start out to discuss them. Like, why raise Monaghan if he's invalid? Don't raise him. Don't talk about him. I, I really believe this very strongly, that as much as we would all like to say that and struggle every day re-examining ourselves to do just that, that we are, unfortunately, very much a part of that dominant culture. It does affect us. Now, if it didn't affect us, we wouldn't be fighting crackers. And that's the truth of it. If it didn't affect us, we wouldn't get mad hmm. about what Mr. Moynihan writes. And if it didn't affect us, certain people would not react to the myth of the matriarchy in the way they do. And that's why it has to be exposed and destroyed. It's not that I really want to spend time talking about Mr. Moynihan. It's that I think that we have to get rid of the illusions, we have to get rid of the poisons, we have to get rid of the lies. And one way to do that is expose it and dissect it. Another way, if we create a new life, a new value system and live it, as exactly. an example. That's what I'm talking exactly. about. That's it. That would probably be the that's best it. way. Because then people could see it as a living thing and not as a theory. Because <laughs> what we need to do is to uh, um, reestablish a new value system. That's what black people need, right. a value and system. How, exactly, and how do we go about that? We go about it the way you go about daily work. First of all, you decide what you want. You establish your value system, you start to live it. Mm -hmm. 
and the people in your community, you start talking to your neighbors. You get yourself together first. Exactly. Then you get your community together. So we're in agreement. Then you get your we're neighborhood agreement. together. We're in agreement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And right. then you can move on out. <laughs> but in the beginning, you got to make sure you got yourself together. Right. 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 Okay. You know, we have to start right here. <laughs> but I think we ought to be sure we understand what she's saying. Now, uh, this uh, relates to what you said earlier about the black nation, right? Exactly. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by the black nation. I mean, black people's lives, being self-determining, defining yourself, naming yourself, and uh, having political power. We're a nation already without political power and military power. We're a cultural nation without political and mil military power. We're a nation, you know, in captivity by another uh, people, a people who have a different, totally different culture than we have, who cannot even relate to the things that we relate to. That is, that is the problem. And as black women, we have to be the inspiration for the nation, for our men. We have to start out into the community educating the children, educating ourselves. Because once we educate ourselves, the children will become educated because we, we are the ones that teach the children. We are the ones that decorate the homes. We are the ones that are with both female and male children. We are the ones that the children look to as the image in terms of their daily education. So it is important <coughs> that we don't get our values mixed up and feel that we have to educate the world. We haven't first educated ourselves. Ooh, it's still always God. a self right. thing. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, the world will relate to us once we can relate to ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, I think we are afraid of definitions and afraid to set guidelines because we might have to live by them. <laughs> <laughs> if you stand up and say a black woman should do uh, this and that, then you might have to do that. But if you say, well, it's, it don't have, we don't have to say anything, you know, we can just do it. Do what? So like everybody can do their own thing. But every society needs a value system. Every society has a criteria in which they live by. And, and we, we live by one. everybody else's part. Exactly. Oh, right. We should have exactly. that. I'm a mother taking her son from the ends of a row. What he's done, God don't know. I'm the pain my mama felt while she was breaking that corn. Cause the boss man made her work. Till the hour I was born These are the hands That fix the food with a smile For in my mama's lap She rocked the boss's child Do you want to see this line? Then listen to what I say do you want to see this land? Look in my face. I'm a soldier on a battlefield, far away from home, who's fighting for something he's never known. A ghost from my past. Me from day to day, and to know I'm going right keeps me on my way. Do you want to see this light? Listen to what I say. Do you want to see this light? Then look, look in my face. My mama fell.
poem for a lady whose voice I like. So he said, you ain't got no talent. If you didn't have a face, you wouldn't be nobody. And she said, God created heaven and earth and all that's black within them. So he said, you ain't really no hot stuff. They tell me plenty sisters take care of better business than you. And she said, on the third day he made chitterlings and all good things to eat and said, that's good. So he said, if the white folks hadn't been under your skirt and been giving you the big plate, you'd have had to come uptown like anybody else. And she replied, then he took a big black greasy rib from Adam and said, we will call this woman and her name will be Sapphire and she will divide into four parts that Simone may sing a song. And he said, you're pretty full of yourself, ain't you? So she replied, show me someone not full of herself and I'll show you a hungry person. That's the poem I did for you. Yes, I, uh, I think I should probably tell you, uh, you know, maybe other people don't, that I had that said to me in 1942. I worked at the Howard Theater in Washington and a black band leader told me, there's millions better looking, sing better, and it hadn't been for you being picked by white folks. You know, That's you dumb. couldn't make it. And uh, it stuck with me a long, long time in my life, and I'm still trying to learn how to sing, but I say inside every black woman, there's an Aretha screaming to come out. You better believe it. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> no. You know, I think that, I don't think it, you are the most imitated singer, black or white, as they say, in the world. I think that happened because I was picked to, like the man said, I was picked at that time to be what they thought a black woman was like. Uh, I was picked as, even before my own development. And when they picked me, they found they had a tiger by the tail because they really didn't know what was inside of me. And I was made to look like someone not me. I was made to look like I had to learn to sing and I was not allowed to imitate rhythm and blues records because they weren't played very much and I was raised by middle class people who didn't believe in singing the blues. And I was made to look like Hedy Lamar and so forth and so on. That's way before your time. Oh, nobody and, remembers that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think then the girls who began to have the opportunity at that time because they had finally opened the way for one, they began to put them into the same image too. And so we had a whole decade like, like or who? so of girls who thought it expedient to imitate me because I was making it, you see. They say you've been trying to change your image. I don't know what that means. Well, I think <laughs> what it means probably is that since Greensboro, as recent as that, and sit-ins, I was able to flee my establishment stereotype because young people had freed me. Mm. And I think that since I always have been what I am inside, that I've been able to survive because they really didn't kill anything black in me. I was, because um, I remember you were out in, I think, Las Vegas, mm. and you uh, beat that guy bloody mm. with your shoe. Yeah, well, I drew a little blood. It was in Los Angeles. It was in Los Angeles. That probably was the first time I felt less lonely uh, by the, the isolation that that was imposed upon me by very nature of its and its definitive isolation from my own people, from white people. This middle thing mm -hmm. that I was in had kept me very much alone spiritually too. And I got insulted. I had frequently done so, but I hadn't done it at the place where there were a couple of reporters around. And the guy made me mad and I struck him violently because I am violent in a way. You're trying and, to say violence uh, purges the soul? <laughs> no, I, he just made me mad. And, uh, and sometime your madness just mounts into, you know, beautiful madness. And uh, I struck him and I got tons of mail and letters and telegrams from black people who said, 
you know, hey, thank you, and how wonderful, and all. I said, my God, I, I'm not alone, and that, that was in the 50s. I had lived a long time without that feeling. Mm -hmm. And there are so many young black people now who I see doing things that are re revolutionizing me and the world. Let me sort of ask a question that might be difficult. Like you grew up with, um, not grew up with, but professionally with Billie Holiday and, um, and Donna Washington. Yes. And, and you survived, and, and they didn't. Do you? I'm sort of asking, I guess, to respond to that. Like, why? Can you? I don't know. I didn't want anybody to kill me. I think I didn't want them to destroy me. I mean, I, let's say my... I won't say hate because it's very bad and I've not allowed myself until recently to love and open myself up to love. I, I was strengthened by my, by my active yes. <laughs> disinvolvement, uh, hidden, but it kept me surviving and I think my background, my, my people must have. I find great migrations made by my great-great-grandmother on both sides that I didn't know anything about until I was in my 40s, and they survived, and, uh, and it must be in us. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry that, you see, I loved Billy very much, and I loved Anna, and they were both very gentle women to me. They were very good to me when I was starting. And I think they formed, I began to know about the sisterhood during those years. You had a personal tragedy. Your father died, and then your son. Mm, yes, this past six months, I've lost my father and my son, and they were both black men that I were, was denied until I was in along in my years. My father and my mother separated when I was three, and my son was taken from me when he was three. But I got to know them when I was older, and they really fulfilled a great deal. When you, uh, when you got ready mar to marry uh, Lenny Hayden, one of the uh, statements that you made was that you didn't have the strength to, uh, to marry a black man. Mm. How would you... Uh, I had married first a black man, and I wasn't a big enough woman to help him. I didn't... I married him because I had nobody. I ran away from life as a chorus girl at 16 and, and a stepfather who was white that I didn't understand. And uh, then I found out how difficult it was for a black man to live at that time and to exist. Mm -hmm. And I failed him. I didn't know... I, I didn't have enough consolation in myself because I'd never had it to give to him. What do you think about the uh, Angela Davis case? What do you think about Angela? I think that I hate to see another one of our, my young women being destroyed. When Angela was arrested, they had a thing uptown. Her mother came, her sister was up there. And um, one of the parents at 13, I believe, one of the young ladies was saying, you know, they can say Angela is beautiful and they can say she's brilliant, but she's right in the same woman's detention home that the yes. sisters that walk the street are in. Uh, what, you know? what I'm so afraid of is this actually is a calculated genocidal move in many instances because the threat of this kind of strength that these young people have, uh, which may not always be comparable to the kind that our ancestors had, is so positive and so fearless that it frightens people. And I don't want to see this continued, but sometimes I worry that it's a concentrated, thought-out effort to not have a young generation I so strong and so beautiful. I'm trouble, 
troubled in mind If someone don't help me Duh. 